guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, finally have a long, 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 long time player and frequently requested guest here on the channel. It's none other than no candy, only Wi-Fi. What's up, man? How you doing? Welcome to the channel. Yo, I'm doing great. This is a long time coming. Yeah, you've been playing since like day two of beta, you said, right? Like a long time ago? Yeah. And you've always been a really good player, and but you've been having a ton of success with this deck. As a matter of fact, you're in Ultimate Champion League, 6411 trophies on one of your max accounts, Fire Pig here. And this is the deck you've been using, and I wanted to bring you on the channel because I just put out an archetype video where I rank the archetypes. I put Graveyard, well, I put Control as number one, which includes Graveyard, but this is kind of almost like a... A hybrid type deck you have the giant you have the bowler and you have the graveyard tell us about this deck why you love it and how do you play this we're gonna do all live ladder matches today guys yeah okay so basically all you have to do is really be really defensive at the start of this because this deck really strives at two times elixir so you just defend with bowler defend it for the dragon and then you heavily push with giant in front of it the counter push is really good and what I found really good with this deck is if you like, if you don't have enough elixir for giant, you can always just graveyard and it's a really good distraction. Graveyard isn't the win condition, it's beat down in this deck. Really? So graveyard yeah. is, I'm sure you win sometimes a graveyard, but it's like mainly a distraction to kind of throw off your opponent a little bit? Yeah. Okay, wow. That is, I did not expect that answer. Man, this is kind of a cool, deceptive type of deck. And and feel free to hop into a ladder match right now. Um, we'll talk more about the deck as we go. And while you do, I gotta ask, no candy, only Wi-Fi. I've always wondered, I've never asked you, but might as well ask you now, what the heck does that mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> how did so, you come up with that name? Me and my stepdad, we were just talking one day, and then we were talking about how... <laughs> Like, you can't attract kids with candy anymore. So, like, you have to use Wi-Fi to attract kids. And you know those bands that say free candy? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> instead of candy, wifi. it's Wi-Fi. So I, I it's guess, no yeah. candy, only Wi-Fi. All right, here we go, man. Hey, Dan, oh, Dan my God. Gannon. Oh, man. What is he? Does he play Hog? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. All right, so here we go. So you, you zap to... Why'd you zap in the beginning there like that? Because uh, I have a horrible cycle, okay. so I really need to just like get rid of a card. Ooh. Oh. Expo. Okay, that's fine, right? Yeah, I... <laughs> I counter this deck, so it's going to be a pretty easy match. Nice. Well, it's always good to start out with an easy one, but you never know. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh no. He does get the lock, but it won't be a long one. Yeah. So uh, I can take a little damage like that. It doesn't really matter because I can block a lot of their expos. And most of the time they choose to go the opposite side of when I'm pushing. So if I push against it, they're going to usually choose to uh, double side it. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy to see that bowler. <laughs> so in a yeah. matchup like this, are you? will you be graveyarding here? Um, I, I like to beat down more, but... It all, it really depends on the situation. Okay. So basically you're placing one card, you're recouping Elixir, especially early game, seeing what he's doing and then making a decision. Since he doesn't have, since he used a lot of Elixir right there, I decided the Graveyard to be the best option. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, he's gonna get Expo off, this is not good. Well, you got two Elixir, you'll get Giant. Okay, so he probably didn't. I know. don't have giant yeah. cycle right now. Oh, are you uh, still a card or two cards? Whatever? I'm two cards right now, but okay. I have bowler, so I'm hoping that he places it right now, not expecting it. Oh yeah. So I love Inferno dragging the I mean, expo. It gives so much value to me. Mm -hmm. He'll get another like kind of temporary lock here. Probably get like 600, 700 damage, but still. Splitting his damage is fine when you have, the, especially when you have the advantage. So he's gonna try to cycle as quick as he can to his archers, mm -hmm. and I have arrows though for him. So I like to arrows the archers against Expo. It gives me the most value of my uh, graveyard. Mm -hmm. 
So talk about, as we're about 30 seconds here into double elixir time, obviously kind of a little bit of an unorthodox matchup because not a lot of people are playing uh, Expo right now. But even yeah. with that, can you talk maybe a little bit, maybe after this push or whatever, can you talk a little bit about the advantages or, or the differences when playing this deck in single and double elixir time? So, honestly, this... Oh, wow. Okay, this... uh. This deck cannot get that big of a push unless the opponent messes up really early on in the one elixir. So you have to really rely on uh, getting that counter push on one elixir. And when two elixir comes, you can spam as good as you, um, as much as you like, and easily push on against everyone. Sure. All right. So fireball comes down. You're going in hard here. He has archers. You have arrows doesn't even use his archers. Maybe he doesn't... Oh, he's going to log instead. So, right here, I wanted to uh, go on the same lane as him. Because I was going to ask, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Since um, if I don't, then he's going to get a lot of value off his expos and then easily defend my pushes. So, I'm pretty sure he's given up by now. Of course, it's Dan Ganon, so he's not going to uh, give up that easily. Yeah, Predictive but... arrows for the archers. Yeah, you and... got it now. So, what do you think about like this deck that you're playing? Why not? Why not run a poison in there? Why not run a uh, a fireball instead of the three elixir arrows? Why is it important to you to have both arrows and zap in the deck? So, I actually created this deck a long time ago when I was lower in trophies and. I threw a deck together, but like I actually really liked it and I kept with it all this time. So poison, everyone tells me that I need poison in this deck and everyone asks how I do not, how I win with no poison in a graveyard deck. So and it's you can, actually You can search really... for the next match, by the way, while you're talking, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's actually really easy to defend with, because I have so much defensive troops, I can defend anything that needs a big spell. And I can easily, from my graveyard, arrow zap anything that comes out the graveyard and it's really quick get away so my graveyard can get the max damage. Or like, um, since minion horde's really popular in this meta right now, arrows is way better, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, because like, I mean, that is one of the things when you have giant and bowler, you have... It's nice to have the arrows against minion horde and minions not have to worry about anything and then you have the, the zap for the bats or whatever, you know, so I can see how the combo can come in handy in uh, in a lot of matchups. Uh, as you start out, you start out with a bowler in the back. Why, why did you do that? Um, usually I start out on the bowler in the back just to cycle, see what he's got. And uh, I realized at the start, I, I know the guy pretty well and when he played the two elixir goblins, Spear Goblins, I kind of guessed that he was going to play Mortar. So I know I can defend the Mortar, and I want him to play into the Bowler. Sadly, he didn't, but okay. I just use the Bowler to cycle, usually. Okay. I gotcha. So the arrows come in handy there. <laughs> so this what? one, I'm pretty sure, does not have Minion Horde, so that's why I use the arrows there. Okay. So what do you think in terms of... Okay, you obviously know his deck. Uh, so what's your strategy gonna be here? Obviously, he's not playing like a hog. He's playing minor version mortar. And are you just gonna again just play this strictly beat down? Do you think you'll ever use a graveyard in this matchup? I tend to use a lot of graveyards and double elixir against this matchup. Okay. But right now, all I want to do is take as little as much damage. Sure. So you're kind of playing it just like 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 you said a hundred times. You're just playing it like a beatdown. So like you're you're okay. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. You're okay so, just defending, playing it slow until you get to double extra time, uh, and just kind of comboing the giant in there like you did there uh, when appropriate. Nice arrows. Okay. The stack really shies off counter pushing, so. I'm against Mortar, that's why I have to go to the same lane and keep switching lanes a lot. Okay, so you're going to counter push against... What What would you do against a graveyard matchup? Would you also play same lane? Because they're trying to do the same thing to you. You know? You know? Yeah. Um, I have to play the same lane because okay. the graveyard push can easily take out my tower. There is times where I want to tower trade against it, not really against the graveyard deck. Okay. 
So against a graveyard deck, in case we don't face one, you would just be using Bowler. Um, <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Bowler, what else? <laughs> I'd use uh, usually Zap. graveyard decks um, have either the giant cycle one or the cannon cart one. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, I need to just distract everything before it gets to it. I mean, before the tower locks on, and yeah. then have my bowler for the, um, the graveyard so it doesn't get a single bit of damage. Absolutely. And another win against another siege deck. Really weird how. Maybe it's the, uh, again, mentioning the archetype video I did yesterday, I didn't include Siege, uh, but then we run into Expo, followed by Mortar. Let's see what we have next, guys. I'm going to edit out the downtime in between. I'll be come right back at you guys with a third match. All right, here we go. Into the next match. We are ready against Yellow. Do you know what this guy plays? Yeah. No, but it's my favorite color. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, that's got to mean and, something. And he has a, a French graveyard. <laughs> Absolutely. So... It's a safe bet that you're going to go against a graveyard deck, which is good. Oh man, okay, Ooh. so cannon cart, uh, it's gotta just be the popular meta cannon cart graveyard deck. Oof, nice. Yeah, I was really afraid that was not gonna happen. Yeah. That I was gonna walk on. So I did a zap for. Just to be sure. Yeah. Just in case, yeah. So he used poison there. I don't know if Ooh. I'm gonna be able to get a gravy push off this though. I know, right? Like everything is just so low health. So in a situation like this, um, he does have he doesn't he you know I don't know. What are you gonna do I at this I, point in the match? Okay, I think I'm going to uh just cycle a Mega Minion in the back, but then giant graveyard since he doesn't have that poison. Okay. I think that I can get this and see how far, how much damage you can get. I don't think I can get the tower off this, but I can get a pretty big amount of damage. And the baby dragon locks onto the giant, which is really good. He does have his poison back, but he cycled really good. Yeah, you might get that giant for a, for a swing. Uh, nice way is so OP. Okay. <laughs> so now it's gonna be bowler time, I guess. Bowler surprise is that the ideal bowler placement against Graveyard? Like right there? No, I usually switched up a lot. I have not figured out the best ideal placement and he placed the graveyard weird, so okay. it wouldn't matter anyways. Gotcha. Yeah, bowler's not a card that I admittedly use that often. Uh, but anyway, you go in pretty strong here again. It seems like you, you combo the Inferno Dragon quite often on your offensive pushes. Is that just so I mean you kind of have to, it's, right? Because you need air. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I like to combo it more than the Mega Minion because he gets so much value against this Baby Dragon and Cannon Cart. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. So I wonder if he'll Graveyard here. Well, you, you, you did exactly what you were talking about. You just clogged up the bridge. He decides to use his poison, so you decide to use your Graveyard, hoping for a surviving troop. He's going to go ahead and NATO so, that. Yep. That was a bad NATO because it caused my Inferno Dragon to stay alive. And it got me so much value with the Mega Minion. Yeah, for sure. So he's going to try for a great, great push, but I'm not going to allow him. I'm just so he's glad. He's really desperate <laughs> for damage. Ooh, oh, shoot. Well, opposite lane on you. Uh, <laughs> you get arrows and zap though, right? So. Yeah. I should be fine. Yep. He's going to have to defend this. Yeah. That left, that left lane could potentially even take his tower if he doesn't do something. And then a nice graveyard. That's got to be GG at this point. Good game. Yeah. I even with the, the poison, tower. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, yep. so that my bowling could get on not tanked. Really well played. No yeah. candy. I'm just glad we didn't, uh, or no Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm just glad that we didn't get another Expo or Mortar deck. Let's go ahead and go into the next matchup, guys. We'll see you when we're there. Oh, here we go. All right, guys, we are into the next match. Let's see if we can keep this win streak going against... Dude! Oh, okay, yellow card, not yellow graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this dude has yellow in his name as well. What the heck's going on here? Yeah, man. Hey, your favorite color. It's got to be a sign. Uh, but you're yeah. going against a tombstone, so that can only mean a couple things. Maybe it's the Lava Han matchup. Maybe... Ooh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
All right, this is interesting. So okay, obviously, so I'm yeah. gonna try to counter push as hard as I can right here. Okay. Uh, are you going giant? Okay. Yep. So giant left and just having the zap slash arrows ready. Mhm. Mm so my bowler is gonna take out that tombstone, which is gonna be really good. Are you gonna graveyard here? Yep. Yeah, on my graveyard right side. Yeah, because he has no elixir left. How can he defend this? Okay, well, a log, I guess, would help out. <laughs> How does he defend this log? Yeah. Actually... But it still gets so much damage. Oh, my God. And he's he forced to NATO. NATO. That. Good game, man. He should have He should have literally left that alone. He wasted so much elixir, and now I can get a really big counter push off this. Why does it seem like, and I don't mean this in any to, to, to disparage anybody, but why does it seem like sometimes... I mean, you are top 200. You've got to be very close right now in the world... And I'm slumming it at 55, 5,600 trophies, and it seems like no one makes those mistakes when I'm playing them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, You're like, I got nothing for you. I don't know. <laughs> honestly, I don't see these mistakes very often, and I, I like calling them out when I see them, because I don't want to make them. I don't want to make the same mistake. No, I, I totally agree. Obviously, nothing against Noctis at all. Uh, I made way, way worse plays than that. We all know. But it is good to call them out, too, for my viewers so that they know in case they're playing against uh, playing those decks or they're playing against those decks. So uh, this is so interesting. this is a really weird deck. I was going to say. Lightning yeah. Royal Hogs. Ooh, that Ooh. was really good because I used all my elixir. But Bowler but, just um, wrecks uh, Royal Pigs. Like, don't even, who cares, right? So I'm going to get a really good graveyard push off this. I'm hoping he does not have poison. Let's oh, have that I zapped wait. But... Yeah. Yeah, I zapped too early, man. It's all good. Bowler. Wow. Okay. Bowler's gonna get He's another going shot really off. He's going really offensive. Oh, Nados. and oh, gets the, the shot off. That was like a sidewinder shot from the bowler. Yeah, bowler really OP. <laughs> this is why man. I use bowler. Bowler's the best card in the game. It's my favorite and best card in the game. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, you're crazy. So he's gonna try as hard as he can to get that right tower. Yep. But I'm gonna let him. It, actually, he's not even gonna be able to get it. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, let's keep the win streak going. We'll see you in match number. What is it? Five. Match number five coming at you soon. And be ten for them. But All if right. it's three months of tier minor. Yeah, guys. Um, in between those matches, I was just asking him what the heart, most difficult matchup was, and he says three musketeers depending on the deck. So you can continue your thought now. I just wanted to clue in my so, audience. Giant three musketeers, ninety ten matchup. Giant easily beats uh, my deck, but the cycle version of it really, uh, actually, I can finesse a lot. Yeah, you're and talking the since... non-pump version. Yeah, the non-pump version, except the royal hog version, is pretty hard too. But um, if it's the ice golem one, I can easily defend it. Because okay. all it has is minion, horde, goblin gang. I gotta say, right. I gotta say, man, first of all, this is a really good push. Second of all, you said you're playing this more beatdown, but it seems to me like you're playing it pretty graveyardy. <laughs> forgive the, uh, forgive the lingo. But is it just, is it just because of the matchups you happen to be going against? Yeah, um, the, it, all it really does depend on is the situation yeah of what's happening in the match i like to go way more beat down but sometimes i have to go more graveyardy gotcha so you take a lot of damage in that push but your inferno d gets to the tower he doesn't have zap that's gonna be tower down nice and gets me the royal ghost too which is good yeah so really well positioned here and this is, I really like doing this, is okay. uh, putting that pressure on. Whoa, whoa, and... whoa! Oh my god, I thought you were just going to take it, and you are going to take it. Oh my god. Good game, man. Good game. That's well... the power of, in of one health Inferno Dragon. Yeah, I guess so, man. I almost feel like we should just keep playing at this point, but at the same time, I do want to... Let's go one more match, and then I'll play versus Lava Loon. Sound good? All right, all right. All right, here we yeah. go. Be right back. Half.
Whoa! All right, guys, welcome back to the conversation again. He said it was number one because that wait, the wait is starting to get a little bit long, guys. So maybe about like five minutes between matches. But he was saying it took him an hour and a half when he was number one in the world, like a long time ago. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty insane. An hour and a half between matches. What do you do? Just like put on Netflix and chill. <laughs> So what I like to do is just look at Twitter, honestly. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, okay, so Balloon's definitely gonna get a hit or two. Ooh, one. Yep. Oof. So I'm gonna push both lanes. And this is gonna be really good. Ooh. Oh, oh my god. You have your arrows ready? Yeah. Man, I sounded so motherly there. Do you have your arrows you ready? Have your arrows ready? <laughs> like, oh, uh, well, so, oh my god. Alright, well, geez. Is this deck really this good? Are you OP or what, what's going on here, man? Did you, did you so, pay off all these people? <laughs> You're making it look really easy. I asked most pros if uh, my deck, um, what they think about my deck and they say it's trash. But then I play it and I completely wreck them. Oh, oh wow. and this is Lava Hound. Lava Hound too. It's Lava Loon, yeah. so we don't have to worry about Lava it. Loon. Boom! I don't have to play yeah. it and get my uh, my butt handed to me at the end of the video. So, I'm actually really glad he did that first push. The first push he did was Balloon Miner, and it really set him behind. But when uh, I don't get a really good first push like that, um, honestly, I all all I have to do is just Boulder in the back. I love cycling Boulder in the back against this. And then put Inferno Dragon in the back and when they play Lava Hound. I, I always push the same side and then uh, my Inferno Dragon always takes out the Lava Hound. I have arrows for the... I, I have arrows for the pups and then Mega Man for the bowler. I mean, the balloon, my bad. I gotcha, I gotcha. It's tough playing and, and, and talking at the same time. Trust me, I, I, know how, I know how difficult it can be. And but, then yeah. oh, oh, it's such a big counter push after that that it's no competition yeah do you think that this deck is like can you maybe just because it seems like you got another relatively easy win here i guess uh can you maybe just discuss uh common mistakes with this deck and, and how to avoid them okay with my deck right yeah yeah <laughs> okay um most people like to go really aggressive first i mean one elixir and it gets them their tower taken away every time so to not lose the tower, be really defensive for some one to like here. Because uh, if you aren't, that really sets you behind. Because it's really hard to uh, come back from behind. Another well, free crown. Holy moly, man. Yeah. GG's. So, honestly. All you have to do is defend for the first elixir. Sometimes I go really aggro, but that's only when I know I'm really up. But you have to defend really big into the two times elixir and then you can get that really big push off and get their tower okay all right makes sense hey so i want to do one i want to do one match against you right so should i would you rather me play a golem deck so we didn't get to see any golem or would you rather me play three muskies which is the most difficult matchup with pump and uh like pump hunter and royal ghost version um like what do you think would be most beneficial to my viewers um, probably Golem because like I instantly lose against three Musketeers. All right, sounds good, man. Let's I do like this. That. All right. Friendly battle, one v one. Boom, oh. done. All right. So I am playing I the Royal Golem deck. I don't know if that the Royal Golem deck the one he used last season, but I don't even know if he's using it anymore. He's probably not. Yeah, fun fact: I, the only video I've been on with you is with Royal. <laughs> Ooh, that is a fun fact. I'm not yeah. sure what to do in this situation exactly. Uh, but should I have played Golem into your bowler there as a? I don't know if you're a big Golem. Yeah, player. you you uh, you always play Golem into the giant push. Okay. Okay, so uh, I usually wait till the Night Witch and then push the other side really hard. Gotcha. This is not looking, uh, not feeling great about this one, but I got this at least. Yeah, okay. And I, uh, I defend, like, really hard. And then, so I usually want them to play into it because I can bowler in Inferno Dragon and mostly, almost always defend it. But then, uh, when two times Elixir comes around, when they place the Golem, I heavily push the other side. 
All right, so are you gonna heavily kill me? Okay, because I knew that you only had bowler, but I thought that I had a pretty big elixir advantage on you. I guess maybe that wasn't the case. Like, how, how are you sitting right now, elixir-wise? Um, I'm exactly the same, same elixir as, as you. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know you used your tornado already, so I can, like, safely just wait out everything. Mm -hmm. Oof. So, I like to arrows that, oh and then God, I dude. spirit. So the key defense against Golem with this deck is Bowler and then Inferno Dragon, and they like to play the Night Witch so that the bats get hit, like right as the Golem passes, the tower locks onto the Golem, and then the bats are gonna hit everything. Well, I I Spirit to clear out the first wave of bats and then arrows and zap. Man, your deck is so annoying to go against, dude. <laughs> I've been told that so many different times. Oh yeah, it is so annoying because like. I feel like I can never go in offensively because you always have either Giant or Bowler in hand, right? Yeah. You always have Giant, Bowler, or Graveyard in hand. So it's not like I'm always able to be, you're always able to punish me pretty severely. Uh, so we do this over here, do this over here, do this over here. All right. So so now, you, now it doesn't matter because you, you pop me with this, this jump. And then, oh, luckily you don't have enough elixir for golem. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or else I've been really bad. I've been run into situations like that, but now I can have a double side push, and yeah. I like yeah, doing good this game. great good gardening. Game. Good game. Wow, Ash, calling the good game really fast. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I feel, I feel like you set me up here. On the, <laughs> you're like, why don't you play Golem? <laughs> I can't. Golem can be a really hard matchup for me if they play right. I'm play uh, Golem into, because uh, Golem for me is really hard for one time elixir, uh, one X elixir to defend. Oh man. And it it so, really gets me if they do like some weird crap. Yeah. <laughs> So what? So basically, you're saying that like, what was my big mistake here? Other than you know feeling like I can never do anything, but like you think that I shouldn't have uh, whatever. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> you should have uh, played the golem into me the first push. Yeah. And okay. then night witch to take out everything I had. So that was like the, my biggest mistake in really like I don't want to I don't want to say this to self 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 serving but like after that mistake in the game like I didn't really have that many openings that you saw. Yeah, um, you had to defend a lot, and honestly, you might have done better by not defending everything and just letting something go so you can get a push off. Yeah, the scary thing though is I know that no matter what's coming down my lane from your deck that you could always combo with Graveyard or so, even if it's like a Mega Minion, you know, or Inferno Dragon, but anyway. That's what I love yeah. about this deck is that you can counter defense and any one of these, Inferno Dragon, Bowler, Mega Minion, Giant, any of them can be comboed with I mean, Graveyard and get a lot of damage. Yeah, and congratulations, by the way. You're 65, 13, 129 in the world. So, hey, Wi-Fi, I would say that we had a pretty successful video. Congratulations, and uh, you are going to be streaming soon on Twitch, so I'll include that link in the description below along with your stats, thanks to statsrail.com. Any shout-outs, anything like that before we let you go, man? Um, well, I'd like to shout-out my favorite streamer, Cashman. Nice. And obviously, obviously you, Ash. I love you, Ash. <laughs> Thanks, and then, brother. I appreciate uh, that. I'm really hoping to get into CRL season two. My fr the first season, something really personal drastically happened, and I wasn't allowed to do the challenge because I didn't even know the challenge came out. But yeah, no worries, man. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, and uh, definitely, that. definitely be pulling for you next year. I really hope to see you in CRL, man. You seem to have a good, a nice personality as well as obviously a great player. So thanks again for coming on the channel, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. No problem. Guys, that is going to do it. Hope you enjoyed this kind of a longer video, but uh, I enjoyed it. Hope you guys did too. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. Love you guys. Huge shout out to Bren Chung, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.